Hello, my name's Amy, I'm a nurse with DHU. And my name's Emma and I'm a clinical practitioner with DHU. So we put together this video today to help you with some hints and tips on how to deal with residents while you're doing the coronavirus swabbing. So first of all, main thing really is to have a clean mouth, no food or drink, if that's possible. Um, if the president has got a dirty mouth or they are eating, wait till a bit later or give them a, some clear fluid to drink so that they have got a clear mouth. Equally, if you find your patient has then got a congested nose or there's obviously some bogeys or anything up there, then please do encourage them to blow their nose. So how would you deal with a, a non-compliant patient then, Amy? <laughs> First and foremost, I find a member of staff who knows the patient very well. They've got a good rapport, so they're friendly and they're relaxed with them. You're going to be less argumentative with them. Yeah, I think it's really important not to overcrowd. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can find two or three people trying to do it and everyone's talking at the same time. So just one person, keep it nice and light. Um, it is supposed to be a fun thing and you can make it a fun thing. Yeah, equally if that resident isn't compliant at that time, you can always try and come back at a later date if you know when they're going to be happier to do this. If morning's better, evenings are better, work with that. Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, if you try and take a swab and the patient is non-compliant at that time, that's fine. It, it happens, it happens to us all. Um, and then you can either go and do somebody else and come back, or if it isn't that day, then the next day, it's fine. We're not going to force somebody to do something that they really don't want to do. And equally, they might let you do the nose swab and not the throat, and that's fine as well. Any swab is better than no swab. So, so have you ever caused a nosebleed when you've been doing a swab? Yes, only a couple of times. If you've got somebody who's particularly not compliant and they are thrashing their heads around and things like that, just be mindful. It can cause a little bit of trauma to the nose. So if it does happen, which it can happen occasionally, just top the, uh, hold the top bridge of the nose, keep the head up, don't lean forward, don't lean back, grab your first aider. Um, so a cold compress is, is sometimes good on the top of the nose. Hold it for a good 20 minutes. If it hasn't stopped after 20 minutes, call 111 and we'll come and give you some advice or we can help you. And equally, when you're doing the throat, throat swabs, you can cause people to gag and very occasionally they will vomit if they are particularly sensitive to the throats being swabbed. Luckily, it's never happened. <laughs> no, they do gag, but they don't very often vomit. <laughs> yeah, just be ready to move out the way and yeah. then just deal with it as you would a normal vomit as well. Um, I think that's about it. I would say just a few tips and hints. Um, be mindful of the breaking point. Um, if you've got somebody that is going to bite and it's a potential swallow hazard, that's something you're going to have to do on a person-by-person -person basis and take that risk assessment. However, if the worst does happen and they do bite on it and they swallow a part of it, you're going to have to call 999. It's never happened to me. No, um, happened. And after you've broken it off, uh, just make sure that you take everything out of the room and that's less likely to cause somebody to pick it up and swallow it if they shouldn't do. Other than that, best of luck. Yeah, let us know if there's any other queries. Yeah, it's fine. Um, it, it's easy to do. It's quick. Being in and out in a minute, not a problem.